The fate of the small city of Pacifica on California's central coast has always been tied to the sea. Pacifica has long been a popular destination for surfing and coastal tourism, and the city relies on the appeal of the ocean for economic success. However, Pacifica is becoming much more popular for an oceanic phenomenon the city would rather not face, coastal erosion due to sea level rise. Pacifica is built on a series of rapidly eroding coastal bluffs, making it a flashpoint in the debate on how best to protect human settlements from an increasingly extreme ocean environment. Indeed, Pacifica became famous in 2016, when 30 feet of coastal bluff eroded into the ocean in one single year. This video will focus on reviewing and defining various adaptive strategies to sea level rise that Pacifica has considered or might consider taking in order to best preserve both human life and the natural environment. First, in order to understand Pacifica's crisis, we should examine the causes and projected effects of sea level rise. According to the IPCC's 2013 report, the quote, rate of sea level rise since the mid 19th century has been larger than the mean rate during the previous two millennia, end quote. This rapid sea level rise is caused by ocean thermal expansion and glacial body loss, resulting from increased carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas emissions. The sum of these contributions has resulted in a current global sea level rise of about 2.8 millimeters per year. The IPCC also defines four representative concentration pathway scenarios that examine the likelihood of certain climate scenarios given a few ways in which humans might change our polluting behaviors to mitigate climate change. The most optimistic of these scenarios is RCP 2.6, which predicts a scenario in which humanity's radiative forcing and carbon dioxide emissions immediately and rapidly decline from present levels. Under this scenario, the authors predict a global sea level rise of 0.26 to 0.55 meters before 2100, proving that even if humanity was to drastically change our consumptive behavior, some amount of sea level rise that endangers human settlements is inevitable. We should also examine how sea level rise is projected to impact Pacifica specifically, as the IPCC predicts global averages that may or may not be applicable to local conditions. According to data from San Francisco, which is about 50 miles north of Pacifica and should serve as a good benchmark, sea level rise under scenario RCP 2.6 is projected to be between 1.0 to 2.4 feet before 2100. Pacifica is likely to experience at least one foot of sea level rise, even under the most optimistic scenario, with the potential for much, much more. Therefore, it is necessary to plan for the inevitability of sea level rise. And indeed, Pacifica has begun to do so. In 2018, the city released a sea level rise vulnerability assessment that sought to determine the risk that sea level rise poses to city assets using a worst case scenario of 5.7 feet of sea level rise by 2100. The study found that thanks to a combination of potential flooding and bluff erosion, the city's critical infrastructure would be at extreme risk. This includes potential damage to Pacific Coast Highway, wastewater management facilities, parks and recreation facilities, communications equipment, gas pipelines, landfills, and much, much more. Across the city's coastal neighborhoods, 1,115 parcels of land would be vulnerable to erosion, flooding, wave damage, or all of the above, the majority of which are single-family homes, but also including schools, healthcare facilities, commercial buildings, and more. This obviously poses a massive risk to the city's future and will require the city to take adaptive measures. In the following sections of this video, I will outline four common strategies that Pacifica might choose to employ to fight the consequences of sea level rise. One of the most popular adaptive strategies to sea level rise employed across heavily populated coastal areas in California today is shoreline armoring. Shoreline arming is a strategy that places physical barriers in the path of oncoming waves to protect human structures on the beach. Defenses such as seawalls, breakwaters, and rock revetments were popular before sea level rise from anthropogenic climate change was a major consideration. Shoreline armoring projects were initially undertaken to protect cities against seasonal El Nino ENSO events. As of 2018, 
Seawalls and revetments covered 13.9% of the state's entire coastline, including 33.4% of the coastline in Southern California's most populous counties. In fact, San Mateo County has 8.2 kilometers of coastal armoring, most of which is devoted to protecting Pacifica's bluffs from sea level rise. Therefore, with these defenses already in place, does Pacifica really need any other climate change adaptation strategy? It would seem like the pre-existing shoreline defenses should be sufficient to protect the town. The city of Pacifica seems to agree with this point of view, as their local coastal plan policies for sea level rise rely heavily on the maintenance and expansion of pre-existing defenses. However, there are a few concerns with the implementation of shoreline armoring that does not make it such an attractive option for the future. The most fundamental problem with the implementation of shoreline armoring is the question of what and whom a seawall or revetment protects. According to Gary Griggs, a marine scientist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, quote, coastal armoring protects what is behind the armor at the cost of the fronting beach. It is only a matter of time before beaches in front of hard armoring structures will disappear with a rising sea level, end quote. Coastal armoring prevents the flow of sand along the coastline, leading to the destruction of beach habitats further down the coast, as well as those beach habitats behind the armoring. This is an extremely anthropocentric lens through which to view sea level rise adaptation, as implementing sea walls to protect human settlements comes at the expense of the multitude of organisms that depend on the beach environment for sustenance. Since coastal armoring is primarily implemented by private landowners, it also raises questions of equity and accessibility. Communities must ask themselves, should a private landowner be able to block off and destroy a public beach? A legal answer to this question comes from the California Coastal Act, a monumental piece of legislation that defines beach access as a public right and implements strict limitations on coastal development. For the equity and environmental reasons cited beforehand, the Coastal Acts Section 30253, quote, requires that new development minimize coastal hazard risks without the use of bluff retaining or shoreline protection devices that would substantially alter natural landforms. In other words, seawalls and revetments are strongly discouraged under California law. While coastal armoring is still allowed in some cases for pre-existing properties, it requires a lengthy application process in which landowners must show sufficient evidence that they will maintain both equitable beach access and environmental stability, a nearly impossible task given the very nature of coastal armoring. Finally, as for the coastal armoring structures already in place, the city of Pacifica itself admits that most existing armored areas may be overwhelmed by as little as one foot of sea level rise due to increased wave loads and structure slowing. Therefore, the existing defenses in Pacifica are not sufficiently effective against sea level rise. And because of the environmental, accessibility, and legislative concerns surrounding the development of new structures, coastal armoring is unlikely to be significantly expanded in the future, making it an ineffective strategy to fight future sea level rise in Pacifica. Beach nourishment is another popular adaptive strategy to sea level rise in California because it presents a simple solution to a complex problem. Nourishment is the process of physically adding more sand to the coastline to slow the erosion of beach environments. Historically, beach nourishment in California has been opportunistic rather than reactionary, as displaced sand from other projects such as harbor construction or river dredging was relocated to the beach instead. From 1927 to 2017, over 500 nourishment projects of this kind were implemented, resulting in 307.4 million cubic meters of sand being artificially placed on California beaches. In the context of sea level rise, beach nourishment is proposed as a solution to halt the erosive impacts of taller and more powerful waves while providing more space for recreational and public use purposes. Additionally, marine scientists have discovered that the slopes of cliffs and bluffs 
are inversely correlated with beach width, meaning that creating a wider beach means less of an erosive impact on the cliffs they protect. It would seem like this is a perfect solution for Pacifica, as unlike seawalls, beach nourishment projects in theory should provide both greater beach accessibility for the public and protection of Pacifica's fragile cliffs against the rising seas. Now to examine the flaws in beach nourishment in California, it is necessary to look to San Diego. Between 2001 and 2012, the county of San Diego placed 2.6 million cubic meters of sand on its beaches, at an estimated cost of $36 million. As in Pacifica, San Diego's goal was to protect steep coastal bluffs along their shore that were vulnerable to marine erosion. After their nourishment project was completed in 2012, San Diego County observed sand levels over the next year, and most of the sand placed in front of the bluffs had disappeared within the first six months. Why did this happen? Well, most California beaches have a natural equilibrium width as a function of wave climate, geography, and sand drift. Examining the long-term record of wave processes near steep bluffs reveals that bluffs naturally face high levels of wave attack and erosion, and therefore naturally lack wide protective beaches. Those cliffs that naturally have a wider beach are better protected from erosion, but it is useless to try and create a wider beach where the wave environment does not favor it. Artificially creating a wider beach through beach nourishment, therefore, is pitting human arrogance against natural wave processes, and the waves win every time. For this reason alone, beach nourishment is a poor solution for Pacifica. Even in wave environments that can support wider lengths of sand, beach nourishment has other concerns as well. Ecologists Parkinson and Ogerkak argue that the difficulty of finding native sand that matches the existing beach, the costs of transportation and construction of sand replacements, and the potential harm to native ecology all combine to make a beach nourishment project a much less attractive proposition. Furthermore, evidence suggests that beach nourishment projects can cause an immediate, long-lasting decline in most invertebrate species native to that beach which can reduce prey availability for seabirds and fish and create an unstable biological ecosystem. Therefore, beach nourishment in Pacifica would be at best a costly temporary solution that fails to truly account for the local wave environment and at worst an environmentally destructive force that destabilizes the natural ecology of the town. An alternative to both beach nourishment and shoreline armoring to mitigate the consequences of sea level rise is living shoreline defense. This strategy involves the intentional restoration of natural habitats such as salt marshes, mangroves, or coral reefs, as these habitats have been well suited to varying sea levels since long before the interference of humans. For example, a living shorelines project in the San Francisco Bay that restored the natural habitats of eelgrass and oyster reefs also reduced erosion by over 30%. Unlike the previous strategies, living shoreline defenses are self-sustaining, they provide a better environment for local ecosystems, and they do not have any beach accessibility concerns. However, even this solution is not without flaws. The main drawback to living shoreline implementation is its limited applicability to a wide range of beach environments. Living shoreline defenses fundamentally depend on the types of species native to a local coastal environment. Returning to the example of the San Francisco Bay, oyster reefs were easy to co-opt for shoreline defense because oysters were already indigenous to that area's ecosystem. If there are few native species in an area that can be restored for the purpose of erosion defense, that area runs the risk of introducing a potentially harmful invasive species or is simply out of luck. Importantly, the NOAA recommends the use of living shorelines, quote, as a shoreline stabilization technique along sheltered coasts, i.e. coasts not exposed to open wave energy in areas such as lagoons or bays, end quote. So while living shoreline defense may have been successful in the San Francisco Bay's protected waters, 
it likely will not be as effective in the high energy wave environment of Pacifica. Marine scientist Gary Griggs of the University of California, Santa Cruz concurs, writing that, quote, there is no vegetative solution for the bluffs and cliffs that make up 1,264 kilometers or 72% of the state's outer coast, including Pacifica, end quote. While living shorelines are certainly a more intriguing and well-rounded solution than beach nourishment or seawalls, vegetative restoration does not make sense in Pacifica's high-energy wave environment. The final and most drastic adaptive strategy I will discuss in this video is that of managed retreat. Managed retreat strategies are policies for future sea level rise conditions that plan to, quote, relocate or remove existing development out of hazard areas and limit the construction of new development in vulnerable areas, end quote. Unlike the strategies mentioned previously, managed retreat is based on the fundamental notion that it is no longer safe or beneficial for humans to be living quite so close to a rising sea. Indeed, humans have a long history of adapting where they live based on the fluctuations of the sea. For example, over the last 2,000 years, 28 towns on the English coast have completely disappeared as sea levels rose and humans migrated out. Even in the short history of major population centers along the California coast, neighborhoods such as Big Lagoon, Gleason Beach, and Bolinas have either conducted an emergency unplanned retreat or have had residences swallowed by the sea entirely. Pacifica itself has already experienced this. Between 1941 and 1970, over 10 meters of bluffs in Pacifica eroded into the sea. As bluff erosion only increased in pace in the following years, this forced the movement of 23 mobile homes from unstable bluffs in 1983, the condemnation of 11 homes in 1998, and the demolition of an entire apartment building in 2010. All of this is to say that as the rate of bluff erosion continues to increase from global warming-induced sea level rise, it is almost inevitable that human settlements will continue to be threatened in Pacifica. As this video shows, measures to halt sea level rise to protect existing human settlements have their own ecological, social, and feasibility concerns that limit their long-term viability in the face of long-term climate change. Therefore, it makes sense to have a strategy of managed retreat in place to adapt to sea level rise so that Californian towns have a plan for the future rather than being forced to repeatedly take emergency actions as shoreline developments increasingly find themselves under threat. In this way, California residents could allow their bluffs and beaches to naturally retreat as sea levels rise, which would maintain both ecological stability and human well-being. There are two problems with managed retreat as it is currently implemented. It is costly and it is deeply unpopular. When Pacifica had to demolish three apartment buildings because of an emergency retreat from unstable bluffs, the town was footed with a $16 million bill and a massive legal battle over eminent domain and property rights. Without a legal mechanism for managed retreat, the property owners of the demolished buildings were not held responsible for building on unstable ground, leaving the taxpayers to front these enormous costs instead. The current method of governmental subsidies for retreat encourages owners to develop in unstable coastal areas no longer suitable for new properties. One potential solution to the issue of cost is a program in which city governments would rent vulnerable land from private owners and then demolish or condemn these properties if necessary. This would hold private landowners accountable for building in an unstable area, while also providing them with the financial assistance to relocate. In this way, the city government would not have to pay such an exorbitant amount of money to acquire buildings through eminent domain. Imperial Beach, California is prototyping a similar solution, indicating that this plan has and can work in the real world. If implemented, this can make managed retreat an even more feasible option for local economies. However, this still leaves the issue of managed retreat's deep unpopularity unsolved. Residents of Pacifica have vehemently raised concerns about what having provisions for managed retreat would do to their own property values, tourism, and the local economy. Indeed, the fight over managed retreat 
led Pacifica homeowners to remove their mayor and city council representatives, resulting in managed retreat being removed from planning documents entirely in favor of vaguely defined quote-unquote adaptive strategies. Still, Los Angeles Times reporter Rosanna Zia puts it best when she writes, quote, Worrying about what this planning document would do to home values is a privilege with an expiration date, end quote. What it will take to convince residents that there must be an option for managed retreat is an enormously complex and emotional task beyond the scope of this video. But there is no doubt that managed retreat is a necessary step in protecting both human well-being and ecological habitats from sea level rise. With managed retreat out of the picture, where does this leave Pacifica? Let's take another look at their local coastal plan. Pacifica appears to be employing a staggered approach to sea level rise adaptation. This involves first maintaining and expanding shoreline armoring. Then, as sea levels continue to rise, beach nourishment projects will become the town's main adaptive strategy. Finally, for sea level rise one foot above the bluff top, the city will provide funding for homeowners' flood protection. The goal of these policies is to stubbornly preserve the existing blufftop developments and to encourage the construction of new developments, even as the bluffs steadily erode into the sea. The document does not concern itself with maintaining Pacifica's natural beach environment, making only a few vague references to ecology whatsoever. It also promises to maintain and expand public beach access, even as the goal of expanding seawall protections fundamentally restricts beach access. In short, Pacifica planners have conceded to the fears of homeowners and business people at the expense of both ecological stability and, in my opinion, the town's own long-term self-interest. This pattern of bowing to economic interests, to comfort with our current systems, and to the outdated and arrogant belief that humans are invincible against natural forces is a fundamental characteristic of human attitudes towards our impact on the global environment. It undermines radical policies like managed retreat that are needed to peacefully coexist with a rapidly changing environment. And until that need is recognized, strategies like Pacifica's are merely treading water.